When an exterior receptacle stops working for you, the most likely culprit could be that the GFCI component has failed. When you push the reset button, you don't hear or feel that familiar click, nor when you press the test button, does the ground fault pop. Fortunately, replacing a GFCI receptacle is pretty straightforward. Tools that I'm using to accomplish this task is a pen tester, some wire strippers, some pliers, a flathead and Phillips screwdriver, tape, and of course, an outdoor rated GFCI replacement receptacle. And this one is also tamper resistant. First step, and always when dealing with electricity, make sure that you cut power to that receptacle. Go to your main electrical panel and hopefully that circuit is labeled. It's always a good idea to double check for power before you start working on anything electrical. I'm doing this with a pen tester as a quick and easy test. But one word of caution, if you want to get technical about it, the best way to truly test for any electrical current is to use a multimeter. If you are unsure or unfamiliar with your house's electrical, I would go this route. There's a bunch of spray foam that should not be on the inside of this receptacle box. The installation of this exterior rated receptacle cover should have been done with caulking on the top and on the sides. Here's an excellent example of why it is better to use a multimeter as the pen tester now indicates current or power, unlike before prior to taking the cover off. So after cutting power at the breaker, the receptacle no longer has current or power running to it, as indicated by the lack of lights on the LEDs, as well as the all green from the pen tester. Next, use a screwdriver to loosen all the screws holding down the electrical wires. It's a good idea to take note of the orientation of the socket as well as where each wire is connected. Take a few pictures with your phone or write it down on a notepad so when it comes time to connect the new receptacle, making the wire connections will be that much easier. This is because when dealing with GFCIs, there is an orientation that needs to be adhered to. And as seen here, you have a yellow sticker that guides you in how to connect the wires. This is even printed on the back of the receptacle where the line side is the power that is coming from the electrical panel and the load side are any downstream receptacles. Prior to connecting the wires to the receptacle, I like to use my pliers to straighten out the wire hooks that will attach around each screw. Unless it is wired in an odd or incorrect way, black will be your hot or power and needs to be connected to the black or yellow colored screw. White will be neutral and needs to be connected to the silver colored screws. And bare copper will be ground and typically marked with a green screw on the receptacle. It's best practice to have the direction of the curl coincide with the direction of the tightening of the screw so that as you tighten the screw down, the curl on the wire tightens around the screw and towards itself. I've made all the connections, I like to put electrical tape around all the screw terminals. With the socket in place, it's time to flip the breaker and let the power flow through the circuit. Here's a final test with the pen tester again, showing how sensitive, or lack thereof, it is. Finally, it's time to put the enclosure back on, after which it's time to enjoy your favorite beverage of choice. Thank you so much for watching. 
hit that like button for me and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.